Now, my name is Mark Polikoff. I've been training and handling search and rescue dogs since the early to mid 80s. I've been doing it with Absaroka Search Dogs and with uh, Red Lodge Search and Rescue, which is part of Red Lodge Fire Rescue. So th the uh, relationship that we try to foster with our dogs is not one of um, a master and a subservient dog. It's more of a partnership where the the dog and the handler learn to trust each other. And depending on the circumstances, the handler may have to trust the dog or the dog may have to trust the handler. And it's just going to depend on what the specific circumstances are. So the handler may need to trust that the dog has odor or scent and is following it in a, di a, direction, a specific direction, even if that direction is counter to what the handler may have as a preconceived notion of where the person may have gone. So we will um, hide a person or uh, an item that has scent on it. And uh, we, most of the time, we want to know where that item or person is because we, we want to set the dog up so that it is successful. And we manipulate the different variables in terms of what the winds are doing um, or how we place the person with respect to the, what the winds are doing. We want to know how far the way the person is so that we can set the dog up so that we know when they are likely to get into the scent and we can anticipate when that will be and how far they will be from the person. All of those things um, are manipulated so that at the beginning of the training, these exercises are very simple, maybe 30, 40 feet. But as the dog gets learned skills and gets experience, we increase the distance, we increase the amount of time that the dog has to work. Because remember, just like a child, a young dog will get frustrated if they're asked to do a task that they can't complete within their, the framework of their attention span. That attention span gets longer as the dog matures, just like a child. And so we work with that to um, increase the complexity, both taking into account the dog's developmental age as well as their experience uh, with uh, the training progression. Basically, once I give him the find command, he is going to go out and look for odor, and he's um, going to do that on his own because he's an experienced dog, and once he hit odor, he's going to go to where the odor's coming from, the subject, and then he's going to come back to me and tell me that he's found someone and go back to the subject, and if I'm slow, which I am, he's going to come back and tell me again and again and again until I get to the subject, and then he gets his reward. For me, it's a combination of a number of things. Why, why I do search and rescue is a combination of a number of things. One, it's an opportunity to have this tight bond with a, a, my dog and to work together towards a shared goal. The other is, it's an opportunity to help people that um, get into situations that uh, prove to be too much for them. And the third really is um, the outdoors. I love doing things in the outdoors, and I have I have the skill set to be able to use um, all of those factors, my partnership with my dog, my experience in the outdoors, to help people. And so really it is, it's a, a way of helping people, um, combining my love of the outdoors and my love of my uh, of working with dogs.